I am on a Scottish adventure, taking on one of the most beautiful driving routes in the world, the NC500. Previously, I drove up from Bradford to Inverness, stopping at T-Bay services and driving through the beautiful Cairngorms National Park. In this second part of the journey, I will drive from Inverness to Thurso, stopping along the way to see some wonderful Scottish sights. Join me as I depart from Inverness towards Loch Ness. So here we are on day two, currently driving over the river Ness in Inverness. Um, if you missed the first episode of this Scotland road trip, this NC500 road trip, where I drove from Bradford all the way up here in into Inverness, uh, passing through the Yorkshire Dales, the Lake District, and the Cairngorms. I'm gonna leave a, a link up to that video, so make sure you can go back and watch that video. But in this video, I'm gonna be heading, well, first and foremost, I'm heading in the wrong direction because I'm actually heading south towards Loch Ness. Uh, if you come all the way up to the Scottish Highlands, it is probably worth visiting the Loch Ness. It's somewhere that me and my friends have sat around talking about for lots of lots of times. Um, we've debated whether the Loch Ness Monster is real or not. So I'm gonna go check it out. It would be at least cool to go see the place. Um, and then after that, we're gonna head northwards uh, through the Black Isles up to uh, John O'Groats, gonna head and finally finish the day in Thurso. So that will be the order of the day. And currently, um, on the way to Loch Ness, shouldn't take us too long. Um, in fact, we're looking to go to a beach just on the northern side of Loch Ness uh, to begin with and that's about a 15 minute journey from where we are. The weather isn't amazing right now, um, I was hoping for some better weather but that's Scotland for you. Uh, if it's anything like yesterday it will just rain and then get sunny and then rain again. As far as the car, um, I'm just enjoying this car more and more. Um, this morning just got into it and just setting off. But yeah, all of yesterday, the car was great. I'm so glad that I was able to do this trip in this car because I did consider actually doing this trip in a camper, but I'm glad, I'm glad I didn't because I just, it wouldn't have that same dynamic driving, that same feel, the same satisfaction. And of course, if you're gonna go on a road trip, especially later in this trip, there will probably be some more challenging roads, some more enjoyable driving roads, especially the Velak Nabar. Uh, so stay tuned for that. That's probably gonna be in episode three or four. So I'm so glad that I've got the Cooper for Mentor and I'm looking forward to seeing some of the most beautiful scenery that Scotland has to offer. And along the way, I'll tell you a little bit more about the car as well. Uh, when we stop a little bit later, I'm, I'll tell you about the luggage space because obviously we had to pack for this trip um, and later in the in the episodes I'll, I'll tell you how it feels to sit in the back as well to be a passenger uh, so once again yes I want to try to make this review of the Cooper Fermento as comprehensive as possible but also I want to see Scotland bring it on the journey from Inverness to the Loch Ness was easy it didn't take me longer than 20 minutes to reach the shores of the beautiful lake where I marveled in its beauty. And here we are, Loch Ness. This is uh, one of those things which we talked about when we were younger. Uh, I hear a lot about it in school, Loch Ness Monster, famous all over the world, famous in children's books and TV shows. Um, I haven't quite seen the Loch Ness Monster yet, um, but there's high hopes. I've got the drone out as well, so we'll have some really cool drone footage. I don't know if you can hear me very well because of the mic, but here it is. This is Loch Ness and it's a lot bigger than I thought it would be. I mean, I, mean, I knew it was quite big anyway, but it's huge. I mean, look at this. It's, this is just the beauty of Scotland. And I've been told that there's other locks nearby like Loch Marie, which are even more beautiful than this. Unfortunately, I won't get a chance to visit those because I've got a head up all the way towards John O'Groats today. Um, but also I can't spend a lot longer here which would have been really cool in the distance there's a ferry right over there could have gone out on the ferry but yeah just so much so busy that I can't do that but at least I'm enjoying the car it's parked all the way up there somewhere and 
yeah i'm gonna go get back into it now and head to our next destination where hopefully we'll see dolphins right so whilst we're here on the shores of the loch ness i very quickly wanted to mention uh boot space of the cooper fomento of course if you're gonna go on a road trip like we are doing you're gonna need plenty of boot space so how much boot let's have a look at the boot of the car you can open the boot using the key which is here or which is here or you can press the button but the this particular cooper fomento actually has the virtual pedal as well so you can just sort of Put your foot in the desk. It's good when you've got shopping. That usually never works, but it's actually worked really well for me. Um, I've tried it before with no problems as well. So that's really cool. The boot itself has 420 liters of capacity, which is pretty decent, especially for the car. I mean, for an SUV, that's not amazing. But the fact that this car is a coupe SUV, it has plenty of boot space because of that sloping roof. And you can put the seats down. If you put the seats down, it's got nearly one and a half thousand liters of uh, boot space. So yeah, we've got all our essentials here, spare boots, clothes. I've got a lot of my uh, video equipment in here, put a few stuff in the back seat as well, but that's not because there's not enough space in the boot. That's because I needed to quickly access all that stuff. So yeah, the boots easily can fit all of our stuff. But what I'm glad about is I've still got a car that can drive essentially in sport mode, drive dynamically, accelerate quickly, um, but has this boot space and is, is perfect for road trips. Um, you can also, you can shut the boot using this button here, which makes things a lot easier. And then of course, get into the car using keyless entry. You just simply open the, open the, this car is actually unlocked at the moment, but you can just simply open the, the door and you can start the car without the key as well. So really, this thing right here isn't actually needed. You can do everything without the key. It's so convenient, makes life so much easier and um, it's going to make this, this road trip a lot easier as well. So onwards to our next point, which I don't actually know where it is. I think we're going to go back into Inverness and go to Inverness Castle to actually officially start the NC500. We haven't actually started it yet. Uh, so see you there. Unfortunately, Inverness Castle was having some renovation work done. So instead, I stopped off at Leakey's Bookshop, which reminded me of Harry Potter. Onwards, we went to Channery Point, enjoying the drive there. So after a short detour, we've made it to Channery Point. Uh, once again, we're not on the NC500 route, but this is meant to be the best place in Scotland where you can, or even in the UK rather, where you can spot bottlenose dolphins. Um, at the moment, we've been stopped here for about five or 10 minutes and we haven't seen any yet. Um, didn't expect to see much, but it's always worth a visit. It's a nice drive down here. And yeah, it's, look at that, it's just beautiful. This is what a lot of Scotland is. I then had to eat my words as the prime viewing spot was just around the corner. The next stop was Dunrobin Castle, which was stunning. Its origins lie in the Middle Ages, but most of the gardens were added later. A great place to explore. So back on the road again, making our way further up north. Um, I eventually want to get to John O'Groats and the and Dunnet Head today. Um, but on the way, we might stop at a few places. We've just finished uh, from the Dunrobin Castle. Such a beautiful location. Um, it blew me away, just the, just the sense of proportions of it. Uh, but as I'm easing myself more and more into the journey, I want to tell you a little bit more about this car because I've mentioned it before, but I am so glad that I've done this journey in this car because it has all the assistance features that you need so it has adaptive cruise control i am so glad that we've got adaptive cruise control because i can put the cruise on at a certain speed and then if it encounters a car in, in front that's going slower than that speed it will slow down to accommodate but if that car speeds away the car will go faster than the speed that you've set which is quite convenient it works almost like a, a speed limiter which is great and also when you need to overtake a car, it's so easy with this, with this uh, Fomentor. I look forward to overtaking cars. This car can do that with, in comfort mode, it can easily overtake. But I use that as an occasion to put the car into sport, get the revs going a little and, uh, you know, do it with ease. You can see, you can see the water behind me. 
most of this road is going to be coastal road especially on this side of scotland in the black the black isles so yeah i mean it's raining now it's going to be sunny probably again i'm behind schedule i gotta go up north to john o'groats and stop at terso tonight but yeah i just wanted to mention that this is it's such an incredible experience in this car I also want to mention an interesting feature of this car which I discovered as I was making my way out of Inverness and obviously as I'm driving the car more and more I'm discovering more and more features of the car but one thing that I really quite liked as I was coming out of Inverness I came up to a set of traffic lights and I stopped the car and it has a stop start function so it will it will stop to save fuel and there was a couple of cars ahead of me and I had my foot on the brake the car's engine turned off when the car in front of me set off the car's engine automatically turned on i didn't take my foot off the brake or indicate in any way that i'm about to set off but the car turned itself on because it detected that the car in front has set off so it basically almost alerted me that oh it's time to go so i think that's a pretty cool feature of this car and um, one that's very subtle but a good touch from cupra after stopping at the Walligo steps we also visited the Duncansby stacks, which were impressive. After a quick stop at John O'Groats, we arrived at Dunnet Head, the most northerly point in mainland Britain. So we finally made it here to Dunnet Head. This is the last stop on today's journey before I go to the hotel in Terso. Uh, so I think I'm going to conclude the video here. Um, just to tell you a little bit about Dunnet Head, Dunnet Head is actually the most northerly point of mainland Britain. A lot of people think it's John O'Groats just over there, but it's actually not. This is slightly more northern than John O'Groats. So this is the most northerly point I'm that we're at right now. And uh, yeah, this was kind of a significant point for me. But anyway, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the car because as I've been driving it today, I've been learning more and more about it. As you can see in today's video rather, I've been wearing my coat. It has been a bit colder today, the further north I've come. And the car has just been excellent for that weather. It's got the heated seats, it's got heated steering wheel, you know, perfect for this kind of weather. Um, when we've been out, especially when we were running towards the Duncanby stacks, um, it, getting back into the car and the, your hands are cold, you know your ears and your everything cold you can stick on the, the the heating stick the heated seats on get the heated steering wheel on and before you know it i'm feeling okay now and i'm probably just gonna get cold again here but yeah the car's been great great compan companion for a road trip later in these episodes i will go further into detail about other features of the car and i'm gonna be sitting in the back of the car to see how it is to be a passenger so make sure you stay tuned for those uh, make sure you subscribe to the youtube channel and make sure you like share and comment join me next time as i attempt to drive from thurso to akmelvik discovering a beautiful beach on the way and even enjoying a zipline adventure and don't miss our disaster if you haven't already subscribed please make sure you do as i have more great content coming soon